Good morning and good afternoon or good evening, depending upon where you are. Um, this is uh, Sean with RSA Solutions, and I want to welcome you to our, our webcast uh, today featuring intelligent data management and specifically related to barcode. Really, really appreciate you joining today and uh, hope and trust that this will be an excellent, excellent investment of your time. Let's learn something uh, really cool today, something really uh, powerful, something that can help us profit, that can help us with uh, better uh, manufacturing execution. We will have a, a little learning uh, kind of experience here at the beginning of the webcast, and then we will actually do a um, an example inside of software technology so that you can see and understand how uh, this uh, technology relates to practical uh, manufacturing uh, that can just really, really help us in some in great, great ways. First of all, I just want to give you an example of where barcode is often used. Now, while RSA Solutions does a hyper focus in the woodworking industry, obviously barcode technology is used across a huge number of applications in manufacturing and retail. Um, you know, you can't hardly go to a, a grocery store or a Walmart or any place you self check out without being able to use barcode. So it's definitely not something we should be fearful of. Um, this particular slide is depicting a fairly common kind of design for a part label in uh, the wood industry, whether residential, commercial fixtures, whatever it is. There's information that we might want to know about that part um, directly printed, and one of those items happens to be barcode. But let's review some of the other. Uh, you know, common kinds of things. Maybe we want to know what job or what order does this part relate to? What product or parent or sub-assembly uh, does it belong to? What material? What's its size? Does it have a name or a description? Uh, what's the machining going to be on the part? Are we applying any uh, edging materials uh, to that? And then often barcode may be part of a label for simple purposes, such as scanning a barcode at a horizontal bore and down insertion machine or a, a vertical or horizontal CNC machine. There's so much more that we can do or technology can allow us to do uh, with the use of barcode. So probably some of you uh, today are labeling either by uh, printing a label, either generally done at a panel saw, a nested base router, or some people may be even in the office and you may or may not have a barcode. Uh, whether you're using barcode for scanning for running an NC uh, machine or not, it still can have great value. But one thing about barcode is that it is a unique ID. So it is relative, in this case, only to this one part that happens to have all of these various attributes. And so it's very uh, unique in what it is uh, going to allow us to gather for uh, information. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to cover a few part label scan functions that are possible with modern technology today. Um, you may not have been deploying any of these, but all of these are very possible and practical and easy to get available within your back factory. So I don't want you to get hung up on the thought of needing to do them all. It literally can be coordinated so that you're only doing the scan functions that you want. So let's begin. First one. You could scan a part barcode and to be able to immediately see on any display screen view the part size and material information. So we mentioned earlier that some people are placing all of that information on a label, requiring the label to get larger and you know more costly, take up more room, and you got to position it correctly so you're not going to machine through. But literally, a scan of a barcode can tell you all of that information at any point. That may seem small, but you can also scan a part barcode, and you could view all of the machining details that are supposed to have or have already happened to the part. So that's really powerful to be able to see it all the way down to the operations that are going to be affected onto the part itself. You could scan a part barcode, and you could change the status of a part. What do I mean by status? So maybe in your company, you'd like to be able to track uh, manufacturing to know where things are and maybe you want to have a variety of statuses um, for a part. So maybe the first one is the part has been cut. 
Maybe one is the part has been edge banded. Maybe one is the part has been machined. Maybe one is the part has been whatever. And so you, I, hopefully you get the idea of what change status could potentially mean for your business. You could scan a part barcode and you could create a damaged or missing part alert. Now I would like for us to live in a perfect world where we never have anything that gets dropped on a corner and broken or machined wrong or the edge banding always stuck or, or we found every imaginable thing. Many of our customers are managing hundreds and hundreds of parts at a time. And so this is just something that you know occurs for them on a regular basis and a way to be able just through a barcode scan to be able to create an alert that can be directed wherever you decide that you want it to be directed so that you know you can um, quickly react to those kind of things. I just want to make sure for a moment that we uh, might understand um, even at a factory that is producing at a very, very high level of quality, um, this still often applies. For example, in the wood industry, in survey of customers, they tend to batch between 30 and 40 cabinets in a work order or in a production run. So if we used a, a, an average or a mean of that and said 35 cabinets and we averaged 10 parts per cabinet, that's still 350 parts you know, running through. So even if we had a 1% ratio, we still might be dealing with you know, two or three or four parts per work order. So this is a powerful thing to be able to scan a barcode and to create a damaged part alert. You could also scan a part barcode and see the product related information. Maybe I'd like to be able with a barcode scan to see a 3D image come up of the product. Maybe I wanna know where the part lives with inside of the product. Maybe I wanna see other related parts to the product or uh, sub assemblies such as uh, fronts or drawers, or maybe I even wanna see all the hardware related to a product. And so it is entirely possible to be able to scan a part barcode and see all of the product related information, super easy. You could also scan a barcode and generate a product label. So why might we wanna do that? So part labels are great, but once we get to an assembly, then we want to be able to know about the assembly instead of the individual parts. So super easy to be able to do that. And I'm gonna show you in a few minutes, a couple of examples of not only product label, uh, but then a, a couple of varieties of types of kit and pallet labels that then can be used. But you can do all of this just simply by scanning a part barcode. You could scan a part barcode and you could include items inside of a kit and generate a label. So what might I mean by that? So um, maybe we have a work order that has, um, some moldings that need to get bundled together. Maybe there needs to be a bag of hardware or seam fill, or maybe there are certain items that you don't want to be part of the assembly. Maybe it's toe kick skin or just door shells or whatever you wanna do. So it can be super easy with a simple barcode scan to include items into a kit. And then of course we would generate a kit label for those so that you could scan the barcode of the kit uh, for various operations that we'll get into in a few minutes. You could scan a part barcode and actually sort the parts by cabinet. So imagine this, um, I have 350 parts that are coming through panel processing and I simply scan a barcode and a system could tell me, put this part in this location or in this slot and it's organizing them so that all of the parts for that product are being contained in one space and the parts belonging to other products are in different spaces. So it would be very, very amazing. Just in our little example, and I don't wanna give you a lot of math today because we know that uh, sometimes when we get too much statistical data can make us kind of uh, lose focus. But let's say that we had that work order that had 350 parts because that was re related to 35 cabinets. We had 70 end panels. So we got not only other parts, but if we just think about the end panels, we have 70 of those rolling through, you know, panel processing, edge banding, all these kinds of operations. And so if I had to try to select, you know, thinking needle in a haystack, 
to pick the right one product or part that I want to start building, you know, I got a one in 70 odds of getting the right one. When I want to find the other, I got, you know, literally a one of 69 odds. And so this just does it all automatically for you. And so it makes it really simple and easy to scan a part barcode and to sort by cabinet. You can also scan a part barcode and you could group parts by type, by material, or by work order. So what does this mean? So literally scanning a barcode could direct its path that it's going to go on. And that could be, hey, I want all of my, uh, for example, adjustable shells to go right. And I want all of the stretchers, nailers, and backs to go to the left or any kind of thing like that. So it could be by uh, by name, by description, by material, or some of our customers are actually grouping work orders for first operation efficiency. You know, for example, if I'm going to do uh, nesting or optimization at a saw, I might want to be able to push more uh, parts into the algorithm um, to get better results and better yield for it, but the ability from a scan of a part barcode to be able to also split that work order back out for additional processes downstream. So lots of really cool things that you can do just with a part barcode scan, but don't give up on me. There's gonna be some other really cool things as well. So this is an example of a product label. So earlier we said you could scan a part label and it would generate the part or the product label for you. So here we can see that we have some basic information about this. This is not trying to say that it's the most perfect uh, product label. I might want to know, uh, you know, what's the cabinet number. I might want to know uh, what room it belongs to, a number of other things. But just for the sake of today, understanding that now we have a unique ID for a particular cabinet that happened to be named open base that happened to be 24 by 34 by 23 and a half belonging to a work order named PM004. So now because the part barcode scan enabled me to auto generate the product label, I could now be scanning it after assembly, maybe to even stage the work to prepare for shipping or even onto the truck itself. So pretty powerful to be able to do that so easily from my part barcode scan. Here's a couple of examples of what I call kit labels. And you'll notice that I'm gonna use uh, terms in very deliberate, deliberate ways because um, often uh, some of these are thrown around to mean different kinds of things. And so I'm gonna use a term here called loose items. So in a work order, I think about loose items being the items that are not part of assemblies, but still need to make their way onto the truck. Um, a number of my customers in the wood industry will actually uh, palletize or kit uh, items like adjustable shells instead of putting them in the assembly. You know, they don't want them slopping around. And so um, those are being uh, put into the appropriate cabinets at installation instead of that assembly. So real easily, you could scan part labels uh, in order to tell the system what you want to go into a kit to make sure it's there. And then from a scan of a part label to be able to generate a label that might be called a kit label of loose items. In the right hand side of the screen, you'll see a different kind of example. And so now we have scanned part labels to generate product labels. And for some of our customers, just after assembly, then they are palletizing products. And so they've got a pallet or a skid at the end of it. And so they're scanning product labels until they have got a nice pallet of stuff. They'll shrink wrap it up, you know, put corner protectors, whatever it is, scan a barcode and to be able to generate a kit label for the pallet itself. So now you can imagine instead of having to scan all of the individual items at staging or shipping, we're now able to just scan the unique ID or the barcode of the kit itself. So I call that grouping management. So now let's think about a little bit further. We talked about part scans. 
So now let's talk about product and kit scan functions. Since this is way later in the operation of a manufacturing process, and there's fewer of these, but still very powerful. So for some of our customers that are utilizing CNC technology as first operations to separate all the parts, to do all the drilling and routing, um, it is possible through several softwares that we're connected to, to be able to scan a single barcode representing the nest pattern. And as a result of that simple scan, it could update the status of all the parts in the nest. Well, why is that valuable? Well, if I'm gonna be producing huge numbers of parts, do I wanna have to scan every single one of those at first operation when I could scan one barcode representing the nest and update, for example, the, the 12 parts that are part of the nest? So that's a powerful thing that you can do as well. You could scan a product barcode and change the status of the product. So what might be some examples of that? Well, maybe I want to um, scan a, a product barcode and to be able to say it's been through carcass assembly. Maybe I wanna scan a product barcode and say it's completed at final assembly. Maybe I wanna scan a product barcode and tell it that it's staged and where it's being staged. Maybe I wanna scan a product barcode and change its status to ship and have a time and date stamp to, you know, for that to make sure everything got onto the truck. Maybe I want to scan a product barcode and include it in a kit, as we saw before, uh, such as a palletizing of products. Maybe I want to scan a product barcode and to create a damaged product alert. So in some cases, we may have only a part that was damaged, but we might have uh, an item fall off of a truck or off of a forklift or whatever it is, and the cabinet needs to be remade. So again, that communication can happen electronically and instantly. We could scan a product barcode and stage, as I said, into a warehouse location. Um, often, there are lots of moving parts uh, for our customers, and so for everyone to have complete clarity where this work order is being staged is often a very huge help. And of course, you could scan into that location so that it's designated as stage. You could scan a product barcode and you could load onto the truck. How amazing would it be to know that 100% of the time you were shipping accurately so we don't get a call from the job site, from the installers, letting us know that they think something was missing. We think we put it on. We've looked all over the factory and you know, we can't find it, so it must be on the truck. Now you can have 100% visibility that it was scanned into a packing list, time and date stamp, and onto the truck. So pretty amazing. You could scan a kit barcode and change the status of a kit. So simple example before, we said that we were gonna palletize some adjustable shells that became a kit and that doesn't need any further operations. And so it gets moved to the staging area and a scan of the kit barcode now could tell the system that it was staged and exactly where. You could scan a kit barcode and load onto the truck. And so maybe that's uh, that I wanted to scan the kit barcode of a molding bundle or whatever it was to make sure because it's not just the cabinets and the custom items and the countertops that we need to get on. We need to get everything that's supposed to be associated with that work order onto the truck. So I'm gonna change screen here for just a moment. And I want you to think about not this 3D factory, but your factory. And I want you to imagine having computers in some locations of your factory with the capability of everything that I've just talked to you about for the last few minutes possible to happen at whatever locations that you decide to have computers and display monitors in the factory. Of course, there's way more that is possible. You wanna know that we're staying on production pace and meeting our productivity goals and a number of others. But I think today, if we just think about what would be the power of having a system to enable us at whatever locations we wanted to have a computer and ability to being able to do these scans. So what I want to do 
is first of all, once again, encourage you and remind you that there is a question section on this webcast. Um, maybe you don't have any, um, but if you do have some, please use that and we will reference that uh, when we get near to the end of our uh, time. It's already uh, flying by and I wanna show you some other things that are really, really amazing directly in the interface of the technology that we're talking about today, which happens to be Production Coach, which was the award winner of the last held um, IWF, which was 2018 Challengers Award winner for innovation across uh, other technologies and, and innovations. It was certainly recognized at IWF and is an incredibly powerful technology that is very fast to deploy. You know, we think about um, <laughs> when we selected design or engineering software and we spent months and months and months trying to, you know, get our data and constructions and all that kind of stuff right and, and, and you know, and really get people able to use it. This is not that way. This is literally harnessing the data that you already have, your barcodes, your labels, super easy to do and to be able to deploy in your factory and be running live. We have uh, countless, hmm, I guess I shouldn't say countless, that would not be an accurate uh, term. We have many, many, many customers who will testify to what this does for uh, their facility, their operations, uh, increasing throughput, improving communications, uh, getting uh, you know, shipping accurate, managing of damaged parts, and the list goes on and on. And we'd be happy to share with you if you need to hear any of those uh, stories. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change my interface, and I believe that you now have a view of this software technology called Production Coach. This is the software that technology that has enabled us to do all the things that we have been uh, talking about uh, in this uh, webcast session. And so what I want to first do is introduce you to the general interface of it. As you'll see, it's very simple, it's very intuitive. It's, it's not um, you know, an office kind of application that requires big training to figure out what it is and what it does. Just a quick brief explanation and I think it will make sense. So I can select on any work order on the left-hand side and it will display in the upper section all of the assemblies. And if you'll notice, there are some loose items as well. So the system is very easy to configure when we're, when we're attaching to your engineering data, uh, you can determine the kinds of things that you want to be loose and then they automatically happen. We don't wanna have to do a whole lot of work, right? We wanna be able to harness the information that we've done, whether that's in, uh, attaching documents so we're not having to print out a bunch of stuff for a work order, uh, making notes, adding custom items, whatever it is that you might wanna uh, do with it. So for this very, very brief demonstration of just a few of the very powerful things that we can do, I want to show you one of those, and that's what it's like to bring in data. So um, agnostic to whatever uh, your uh, solution might be, we have connected, of course, to industry uh, software such as Cadnavision and Microvellum and Mosaic and, and, and EMOS and WCAG Cam and Cutright, but to tell you the truth, we've also built the technology so we can configure it from an Excel import. So don't worry about that. It'd be super easy and then a click of a button and it's imported. So now if we look at this, we'll actually see we have all these assemblies in and I configured mine to make the adjustable shelves loose. And so super simple. Now, of course, we talked earlier about some of the functions being tracking. If I looked at this work order that we've only imported, I want you to see that the system not only brought in the data, but it also calculated because of routings, part routings, that we know exactly what needs to happen at each of the um, computer stations that we have on the factory floor. So we know that 163 parts need to go through what we call panel processing. We know that there needs to be you know, 21 parts that are gonna get finished and 10 products to build. And, 12 detached or loose items. So really cool at a click of a button. And of course, as you're doing these scans out in the factory, all of this is updating for you real time. So if you care about knowing where work orders instead of you know traipsing down and trying to walk through and figure out and 
you know, calling people or whatever, you can literally know at an instant by a click of what you're doing. The only other thing that I really want to um, do uh, temporarily is that I want to go ahead and create for this work order what I'm going to call a, a packing list. And so for sure, it makes sense that we are controlling what should go onto the truck instead of shipping just tell us what did go onto the truck. And so I'm gonna create here a packing list. And as you'll notice, um, the work order that we imported was called PM004. So I could just simply click it. And now everything that's part of PM004 could be on it. But I also have complete control over the products and detached items to determine what it is that I might want to include or not. Um, maybe I got a call from the job site and they're not gonna be ready for something in a particular room. I could unselect that and it would be available for a future packing list. Or maybe I'm working on a commercial job in, that has multiple work orders associated with it and they need me to rush something from another work order. So I'll go select this and say, hey, I need to be able to include not just the items of PM004, less that one item, but I need to include things from another packing list. And so I'm just gonna give this packing list a name. And so now we'll see that we have a packing list in the system that contains exactly these items. So hopefully that's making good sense to you. So we've only imported a work order, we looked at its status and we've created a packing list. And so these might be functions that you have done in the office and prepare for production. So instead of doing a whole lot of scanning and stuff today, what I wanna do is open up the station to something that I think might not have been perfectly obvious related to, just a second, related to how the sorting of parts can work. So I'm gonna open up as a different type of station. So imagine these to be different computers out on the floor, that each are turned on or off for the kinds of functions that you want to do. And so I'm going to open up sorting here now. So I'm at PM004. Let me minimize this. Got it. And I'm going to open up. I'm at a sorting screen and I'm going to open up my configuration for doing sorting. Now, what I want you to realize about to go get cart A. That's because this work order that I imported only contained 10 products and my mobile card here can handle 12. If it would have been a work order containing what we said was a median of 35 cabinets, it would have said go get rack A, B, and C or ADF, whichever was available. So as soon as I say okay to this, I want you to see that it calculated where all of these products, you know, one product per bid, where it needs to go, and it tells me that the very first part needs to be stuck in the slot number seven, making it real simple on screen to tell me exactly. I just scanned another part barcode, and this time it told me to stick it in slot five. I'm gonna continue to scan enough part barcodes in order to complete one of the bins. Okay, so I hope that you can get from the essence of that, that as quickly as you can scan a part barcode and stick it into the slot, then you have the ability to sort parts as fast as you possibly can. Uh, many of our customers would testify that it literally cut like 85% of their material handling, you know, out of the process uh, for that. And so let's, let's think about what we're seeing here on screen. So we have a mobile cart in front of us and we put some parts in it. We have only one slot that has all of its parts, in that case, five of five, but we have, we have scanned some parts in other slots. So notice the legend at the bottom left of the screen. It's telling me, hey, number seven is ready for assembly. Um, we have a, a, you know, an assigned that is blue. Now, if I wanted, at any point, I could click into any bin and I could view the parts that are inside of it, 
or I could view the parts that are missing. So let's say that maybe a label fell off of a part and I can tell that it's a left side by where the back groove is and you know the whatever uh, for it, but I don't know enough about it to identify and say it definitely goes to this product. I could literally just click a button and now I see, oh, here's the material. Um, here's It's a three drawer. Yes, I can tell by the, the uh, pattern for this. So if I wanted, I could manually sort it without even having to recreate a, um, you know, without having to remake a part label, but we can do that as well. Maybe I notice that a, a part actually is damaged. And so I could just literally select a button and you can have an unlimited number of standard reasons for damage. And so I'm gonna blame it on the edge band guy and say, hey, I think you dropped this on the corner. That is literally creating a damaged part alert. There it comes in the system. And so that could have been directed to any PC in the office or at first operation or wherever you wanted to go. So now it popped up on the screen and I can see that it's related to a particular work order. It was damaged by edge banding. I can see the time and date stamp. I can tell you the station that reported it. Um, if I wanted, I can see more detailed information all the way to its barcode. So it's pretty amazing what I can do. And when I have corrected it, I can tell it where I corrected it. I'm gonna say, hey, I fixed this from the office and now it's being expedited back through manufacturing or grouped with other damaged or missing parts and then those done as a separate batch. And so what I hope you can see is the system is super functional. And if we notice our, our thing, it went from orange of a damaged part to now in progress. So at least assembly knows that it's being worked on and it's gonna make its way uh, back to them. So if you would remember for me, bin number seven, and I'm gonna open up an additional instance of production coach, and we'll open this up to assembly and I'll show you something really cool. So here we are. Uh, working at this and now we see even in the list that we can tell that there's a part in progress now related to a product. So now I'm going to think about the parts in bin number seven. I'm going to pull them out and scan any one of them. And in a singular scan, the system is going to completely change. It's going to build on the fly a 3D of the product it's going to highlight the part in the assembly and show me all the related parts, fronts, and hardware that are needed for building this. Now, I had to do some additional functions based on this. First of all, I had it change the status. If you'll notice this column, I had it change the status to assembled for this product, or it could have been carcass assembly, or that could have happened if you scanned a second time, however you want to be able to do it. And I told the printer to generate a product label. Now, what's beautiful about this is that I also have the ability to do things with it. So for example, maybe I wanna be able to hide a part or I want to be able to see underneath it or behind it, whatever you might need to do, you have full control over doing this. So that's pretty cool that we have items that just from a part barcode scan can now take us to product barcode and 3D visualization and complete control over the model so that we're building exactly right. You can even have, you know, assembly instructions that pop up, you know, based on certain hardware conditions to be able to help assembly know exactly what they need to be able to do. And of course, there's always the ability to click a button and see the documentation that has been associated with the, the work order itself. So I'm gonna open up one more station for today and then we'll move on uh, to question and answer section. This particular one that I'm gonna open, I'm gonna call my shipping. So here at shipping, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, open up this particular packing list that we have. And so here are all the items that need to be scanned on uh, to the truck in order to make sure that we are doing good. So I'm gonna scan a first product label. So notice that it turned green. It also took over the sound of my system and it placed a, a shipped on exact moment time and date stamp on that item. So that's pretty cool that it's making sure of that. Of course, I can show this 
I can just display the list by what's been shipped. I can show all. I can show just what's not been shipped yet. And so it gives you all the kind of filtering and stuff that you might want to see. So let's go grab some more. So now, first level of notification. I scanned a barcode that I had already scanned. That should alert us that there is something that is problematic about that that should have already been loaded on the truck and we shouldn't have two of that identical thing. I'm also going to make a scan of something that does not belong in the packing list at all. And so it is not only making sure that we get everything that's supposed to be on the truck, it is also making sure that we don't get anything that's not supposed to be on the truck. And so that makes it really, really easy for us to be able to uh, work with. And of course, you could say, hey, I want to be able to print the uh, packing list of this, and it will generate then a report for you that is displaying, oops, did that a little fast. Oh, sorry, my fault, my fault, my fault. Um, I had it selected just to print on a single item, but I don't want to print just Chris. I want to do all of the products. But the point is that you're able now to have a printed packing list or an electronic file that has um, everything that's been scanned onto it. So you at least never close a truck without knowing for sure, did you get everything on it or is there any items that intentionally need to be back ordered. So anyway, that gets me to the uh, point of presentation that I just want to display one final thing for this. And we'll just see that the system has been being updated in real time as we are doing the amount of work we did. Obviously, we couldn't uh, do the entire work order. We would have consumed way too much time. And, and I want to leave it for you because this is to me about you. This is about giving you information and knowledge that you can take back to your own company and your own environment and be able to determine how barcode technology might be able to enhance your operations and especially manufacturing execution. So <clears throat> I did not see a lot of, <coughs> of questions, but I do see this. Um, order when they arrive at our factory. I don't know what that means. Okay, um, I see now I just needed to click inside of this. I got to figure out how to detach this real fast. Um, for parts that are manufactured outside of the facility, such as doors, how do we do those parts um, join when the order, when they arrive at our facility? Very, very very good uh, question. So first of all, we could talk about this and you can be in partnership with who's supplying, for example, your doors. And so uh, they could already come to your facility already with unique identification, or you could identify them as they're coming into your facility. And this technology also gives you the ability to generate unique IDs for those items, even though you did not um, manufacture them. Let's do a practical example. Some of our customers sort case parts separately than they sort drawers and fronts. So I think here is a really good example of that. And so you could identify, scan, and sort the doors into their own unique uh, carts for organization. Now, I want you to imagine this for a moment. At assembly, they pull case parts from a bin, scan any one of those, and an instruction pops up to them and says, hey, your doors and drawers for this cabinet are found in cart C, slot six. Just amazing. So, so for sure, we can help you with those things. And, and you know, today, we, we can only get so deep into specific things, but you'll notice that there will be a um, there will be a exit survey that helps us know if you would like to engage for more detailed information about how this technology could be applied in your facility. What are we connecting to? What uh, stations do you want on the floor? What do you want them to do? What's your 
you know, goals and, and, and when do you want to be able to uh, achieve these things? And so let's see what else we have. How um, can we confirm that it was delivered and installed on site? So here's what I recommend. We recommend. There are many, many things that you can do to improve your manufacturing <laughs> execution, to improve you know, deliveries, installs, visibility, communications, a ton of things. What, what I recommend is this. Let's start off and let's achieve some really, really important things. Let's get it fully integrated and running live. And then let's consider additional advanced, extended kinds of things that we might want to do. And one of those, I believe, is what I'm going to call job site tracking. So we have a, a web-based way for you to be connected to the land data, you know, your factory data, so that delivery drivers or installers can have access to the information and to be able to scan and to be able to report damaged parts and to update us for status and to make sure it was delivered and all of those kinds of things. So I just want you to know that, that there are many, many incredible things that can be done. What I hope that we don't do is to try to consider every imaginable thing initially. Let's be really, really focused. Let's think about these scans. What could we do with the scans? Let's think about putting you know, three or four stations out in the factory. Let's improve our part sorting. Let's get assembly automated. Let's make sure we're shipping accurate or wherever you might wanna you know, have uh, stations function for uh, your operation. So great question, both of you. Thank you very much for those. I'm trying to see this. I don't know why it won't expand. If I miss somebody's question, it's not um, intentional. It is because I it's given me like a little dinky window to be able to see this, and I can't figure out how to make it pop out. So, um, boom, boom. How do we confirm it was delivered? I think that I got to the questions at least that I can see. And I mean, I'm gonna apologize if I missed someone's questions as a result of that. Let me go look at this from an attendee standpoint. So I saw Brian Mann and Jim Markham. Okay, those are the only two that I see. So that means that I either did a really great job today and answered all of your questions or I was really, really boring and that you already knew everything about this and so you didn't really have any additional questions. So either case, what I wanna be is respective of your time. Uh, we don't let it go over an hour, but we don't have to drag it out to an hour. So what I wanna do is thank you very, very much for attending today's webcast. I hope and trust that it was a great value of your time and that even if you got one little thing from this that can improve your factory. I, I hope that it serves you very well. And, um, you know, stay uh, stay focused on the, the RSA uh, uh, Solutions website, rsasolutions.com for future webcasts. Um, in 2021, starting this month, was the first of additional webcasts that will be related to this technology each and every month. And so I believe that there'll be some other really great uh, presentations and educational content uh, for you. So again, this is Sean with RSA signing off today. I want to thank you and I really appreciate it. You blessed me by attending today and I hope it was a great um, value to you. Take care and God bless.